Hello everybody, you already know who it is, for those that don't, I'm Dead Ponds. I'm here to go ahead and tell you how to do Leviathan Raid as fast as humanly possible. Let's go! The order of every encounter changes every week. To find out what's first, it'll tell you as a new objective on the top left hand corner of your screen. Follow this path to the Castellum. Welcome to the Castellum. This will be your focal point between each encounter. For the first encounter, you'll need to find where the enemies are. Once you've found the enemies, go ahead and clear them out. Once you've cleared them out, you'll need to split your team up into one team of four, which is ad control, and one team of two, which are runners. The team of four is going to defend this area from enemies such as Cabal and Liberators. These Liberators are trying to steal back the banners that your runners bring to your plate. All you need to do is just simply take care of them, and every once in a while, a scion will spawn with a shield around it. You'll know when this happens. A message will pop up on the bottom left hand corner of your screen saying, that a counselor has appeared in the area. All you need to do is look around, step inside the Scion's shield, and kill it. If you don't, the Scion will put a shield around the Liberators. This will make them immune to all damage. Now, runners, once you've stepped on your central plate, symbols will appear. They'll be either dog, cup, axes, or sun. What you'll need to do is go to these areas and kill all the ads there. Pick up a banner and bring it back to your central plate. Here's a map of the arena. You'll need to bring three banners to your central plate. Once you've done that, the door will open and you can continue to your first encounter. Welcome to the Royal Pools. Here's a map of the arena. For this encounter, you'll need to split your team into two teams of three. One team on left side covering axes and hound or dog, and one team on right covering cup and spears, and one person on each team in the middle. One of these players needs to pick up the sonic protections to get ready immediately, where the other one does a countdown for everyone to jump on their plates. Once everyone jumps on their plates, the encounter will start and these players are going to get a stack of sonic protection. You'll need this to stand on the four outer plates of the arena, and every second that you stand in the water, you'll lose one stack of sonic protection. Once this reaches zero, you'll slowly get burned by the water until you die. So in order to keep this buff active, you'll need to grab the buff in the middle. So the middle players are going to start this rotation by running to one of the players on their side. And whoever these middle players went to need to rebuff in the middle and swap positions with the other player on their team so they can also rebuff. You need to keep doing this so you can have somebody standing on the outer plates to lower the chains so they get locked in place. But while doing this, bathers will come up from the water in front of the chains. Kill them as quickly as you can. Once the chains are locked in place, everyone go to middle. Once in middle, wait for the first bather to come up, kill him immediately and then once he's dead jump on center plate and use chaos reach top tree hammers anything you can to destroy the three groups of lanterns in the middle and you'll one phase every time once the encounter is completed go back the way you came in do the castellum and get ready for the next encounter Welcome to the Pleasure Gardens. When you first come in, go ahead and clear out all ads. Once you've cleared out ads, two crystals will spawn in the center of the room. This is your starting point. At this point, you'll need to split your team up into one team of four, or runners, and one team of two, or guides. To start the encounter, you'll need to pick up both crystals. Once you've picked up both crystals, a door will open up at the base of the cow statue. This is where the runners jump in and pick up their spores, and guides. Once the encounter starts, you'll need to jump to your respective sides, left side and right side, and you'll need to look around your area for glowing purple nodes. These nodes will spawn on L1, L2, L3, and trees, and R1, R2, R3, and caves. One node will spawn on each side. You'll need to tell your runners where to go and if the pathway is clear of the dogs. Runners need to be as stealthy as possible. They can't be spotted by the dogs or a white mechanic will begin. The only way to be safe from this white mechanic is to either kill the dogs or run back to where the runners drop down. This is a safe room, and you can only use the safe room three times. You can tell how many chances you have in the safe room by the red lights inside and on the entrance. Once the runners get to a glowing node, the crystal bearers will need to shoot these nodes to buff the players. The only way for the guides to go ahead and shoot these is to stand in a beam of light. You'll know if you're standing in a beam of light is if your crystals has light shooting off of it. Every time you shoot a spore and buff your team, beast hunters will spawn on both left and right side. Runners cannot take care of these guys. Crystal barrels will need to shoot them with their crystals. The runners will need to stick together to get the max empowerment from each spore. The more buffs you have, the more damage you'll do to the dogs. And they'll need to move fast because if they don't, the dogs will automatically begin the white mechanic. Once you feel like you have more than enough spores, get ready for DPS. All you need to do is just go to the dogs be located at L1, trees, and L3, R1, R2, and R3. Once you've killed all the dogs, return to the base of the Kala statue to get your loot. Return to the Castellum and get ready for the next encounter. Welcome to the Gauntlet. There's many ways to do this encounter, but I'm going to teach you one. For this encounter, you'll need to split your team into two teams of three, and on each team, you'll need one runner, one person on plate, and one person on ground. To start this encounter, you'll need to step on all the plates. Once all the plates have been stepped on, ads will start pouring in from both the left and right side doors on each symbol. Once you've cleared all ads, orbs will spawn on both dog and cups. These are where your teams are going to be. Wherever the runners are, need to pick these up as fast as possible. If you don't, the team will wipe. Once the runners pick these up, you'll be teleported to the Gauntlet. Every quarter of the track, the runner will be blocked. 
You'll need your plate person to be on the plate so the runner can see the holes light up. One of these holes is going to be red. The runner will call out row that this red light is on, either it be top, middle, or bottom. And on each wall, there are arrows. The arrows correspond to top, middle, and bottom on the runner's side. What the plate and ground players need to do is shoot the opposite ones at the runner's call. So if the runner calls out top, you'll need to shoot middle and bottom. Do this successfully, the runner will run through the red light circle and pick up an orb to reset the bomb that they have in their hand. Every time the runner makes it through a wall, a sign will spawn for the plate and ground players. Kill the sign as fast as you can, or it'll summon a purple floating scion. This scion will wipe the team if not killed immediately. Every time you kill a scion, plate and ground players will need to rotate with the runner clockwise and repeat the same process. You'll do this until the runner reaches the finish line. Once the runner reaches the finish line, they'll, they'll dunk their orb in the middle. You'll have three rounds of this. After the third round, everyone will need to go to the middle and pick up an orb. Now everyone runs the gauntlet. The teams will need to alternate who picks up what orb from which wall until you get to the finish line and once you hit the finish line, dunk the orb in the middle and you're done with the encounter. And return to the castellum the way you came and get ready for the final encounter. Welcome to Emperor Kallus' Royal Chambers. For this encounter, you'll need to split your team into two teams of three. One team in Void Room and one team in Throne Room. Start this encounter, shoot the cup out of Kallus' hand. Once that happens, Ad will start pouring into the room. Go ahead and clear him out. Once you've cleared him out, everyone will get teleported to the Void Room. The people who are going back to Throne Room and they jump into the orbs in left, middle, and right. There's one orb per person. Once that happens, Chaos will begin to pull in the people in Void Room. People in Void Room need to be behind a barrier the whole time. Avoid ramps and holes in the floor. People in Void Room will see symbols on Chaos's head. You'll need to call these symbols out one person at a time. Usually call them from whoever is on the left side to the right side. The people in Throne Room will have four scions. These scions will have a symbol of right above them. The people in Throne Room need to listen to these callouts and punch whatever they don't call. When the Throne Team kills a scion not called out, this will progress the Void Team up a barrier. Void Team also needs to look out for floating scions and scions on the ground. Kill everything as fast as possible. If not, the floating scions will wipe the team and the scions on the ground will throw you into the air. This will allow Kallus to pull you in and kill you. Do this three to four times until the void team gets to the end. Once the void team gets to the end, Kallus will begin to shoot skulls at you. Destroy as many of these skulls as you can. The more skulls means more damage on Kallus. During this time, people on throne room will need to break Kallus' shield, but don't break it too quickly because as soon as you break it, Kallus will begin DPS phase. And if you don't have enough skull, you won't be doing a a whole lot of damage to Kallus. But also don't let Kallus have his shield up for too long. If it's up for too long, he'll wipe the team. Once Kallus' shields are broken, Void Team will have orbs in front of him. Jump in the orbs to return to the throne room. Once everyone's in the throne room, you can start on one of the four symbols and go either clockwise or counterclockwise from that starting symbol. You'll need to stay on these plates to do damage to Kallus. You have roughly 10 seconds per plate to do as much damage to Kallus. During this time, Kallus will be shooting at you. Use Well of Radiance or dodge these attacks while also doing damage. If you don't want face Kallus, you'll have to rinse and repeat. And every time you do this, Void Room will have less and less floor to work with. Once you do enough damage to Kallus, he'll be in his final stand. Just continue to shoot him to break his shields. Once you've beaten Kallus, an elevator will lower in the center of the room. Go down and collect your loot. If you somehow vibe with these kind of guides, please leave a like. And hell, why not subscribe to the channel? It inspires me to make more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, and have a good one.